Good morning. It's Tuesday, January 12th, 2021. This is Morning Prayer. I'm Pastor Steve Woodfin from our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Birmingham, Michigan. And today we're going to uh, re-experience uh, Luther's uh, Damascus Road experience or his Tower experience where he fully realized for the first time in his life and then of course has now shared with us what the righteousness of God really means for us as we follow Jesus in faith. Well, let's begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. First, Psalm 63, beginning at verse 3. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you, so I will bless you as long as I live. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. I like that term, uh, my soul be satisfied as with fat and rich food, because we all can identify with having a truly, truly amazing meal and um, how it makes us feel even as we savor each and every bite. Well, such is the grace and the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that just one morsel at a time we can savor with great joy, uh, not only for now in this life, but for eternity as well. Okay, let's get right to Luther's Tower experience. It begins with a reading from Romans chapter 3, uh, a passage that goes into that phrase that I mentioned earlier, righteousness of God. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight since through the law comes knowledge of sin. As a quick aside here, that's describing what we've talked about in the past, about the law being used primarily as a mirror. As we look into the law, we see how sinful we are, so that all are held accountable to God's law. Okay, going on, verse 21. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood. Propitiation, by the way, meaning uh, uh, an appeasement, uh, something that pays the full price, uh, it also provides atonement, uh, making us at one, once again, with our Heavenly Father. So propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Okay, so... Uh, what we call Luther's Damascus Road experience or his Tower experience, it's that aha moment that he had when he realized fully, when the Spirit fully revealed to him what it meant when he said that term, righteousness of God. Because up to that point, Luther and the church taught that the righteousness of God was actually that which condemned us. Because God is righteous and perfect and holy, we are sinful and fallen, and so the righteousness of God was that a thing that God used to condemn us. And so righteousness of God was something that Luther said he hated. He hated that term. But now listen to what he writes about as he considered and pondered on Scripture and the Holy Spirit revealed the true meaning of that term righteousness of God in the book of Romans. Then finally, God had mercy on me. And I began to understand that the righteousness of God is a gift of God by which a righteous man lives, namely faith. And that sentence, the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel, is passive, indicating that the merciful God justifies us by faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Now I felt as though I had been reborn altogether and had entered paradise in the same moment the face of the whole scripture became apparent to me. 
My mind ran through the scriptures as far as I was able to recollect them, seeking analogies and other phrases such as the work of God by which he makes us strong, the wisdom of God by which he makes us wise, the strength of God, the salvation of God, the glory of God. Just as intensely as I had now hated the expression, the righteousness of God, I now lovingly praised the most pleasant word, the righteousness of God. This passage from Paul became to me the very gate of paradise. Isn't that astounding? And what a great insight. You know, for those of us who have been raised in the church or have, have learned uh, and understood the doctrine of, uh, of salvation through Jesus Christ and the righteousness of God that's imputed to us because of Jesus, uh, it, it's a foreign understanding to hear how Luther considered it prior to that. So to hear Oh, how he regarded it as something that he hated, and now it actually flipped around completely. It became the very path to the righteousness of God, the very gate of paradise. I love the way he described that, and you can almost feel that, that transformation in his heart in that moment that he realized that we are justified freely by God because of the faith that he also gives us. What a glorious, glorious truth that is, and what an amazing gift God gives us through Jesus Christ. So let's, uh, let's, let's close now with uh, the Lord my God be praised, verse 2 from our hymnal, and a short prayer as well. The Lord my God be praised, my trust, my life from heaven, the Father's own dear Son, whose life for me was given, who for my sin atoned with his most precious blood, and gives to me by faith the highest heavenly good. And we pray, Almighty and most merciful God, the protector of all who trust in you, strengthen our faith and give us courage to believe that in your love you will rescue us from all adversities. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, who is also our Lord, and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And we also pray Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Well, holy saints of God, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace now and forever. Have a great day in the Lord, dwelling in the righteousness of God that he has given to you through Jesus Christ. And I'll see you tonight at 845.